Oh, hello. Starting a little bit early today because, uh, well, because I'm sitting here and, um, <clears throat> the longer I sit here and contemplate life, uh, the more I feel like I'd be better off hitting the go live button. So let's do that. Uh, welcome in, uh, welcome to live painting and chill with precious juggalos hosted by me shovel. Um, if you haven't been around before, basically what we do in these streams is we, uh, we paint little, uh, little juggalo faces on little non juggalo items. Today is day three of the, uh, little bitty juggalo cherubs that, uh, that I've been working on today is going to be the day we finish it because, uh, well, cause frankly it needs to be done. And uh, it's very close to being done. It's just uh, needs a little, little extra detail. Uh, I also have a flavor of the day every day. Usually it's Fago today. Um, we're we're breaking from Fago, and we're going to go with my number one favorite drink, Country Time Lemonade. That's right, Country Time Lemonade. For any day that you're just uh, thirsty, which probably be every day. Um. Grab yourself a big old cold mug of Country Time Lemonade. Take a big swallow. <sighs> and everything will be better. I guarantee it. So anyway, you're not going to be able to uh, enjoy watching me pour a Fago into my cool mug. Um, instead, you're just going to watch me drink uh, lemonade and paint Juggalos. So let's do it. Um, I think I gave enough of a breakdown of what's going to happen here, setting expectations, you know, like a host should. Um, everyone, of course, is welcome to chat if you're interested. If you're not, just hang out and watch or listen or do whatever you want to do. I'm just here to paint. You're just here to hang out. So that's the deal. Anyway, here we go. Day three, precious juggalos, juggalo cherubs mini version because I've made much bigger versions. Uh, I did adjust the camera. Um, we're doing a new lens and, um, I went ahead and moved the camera, physically moved the camera because there is no zoom feature on this lens. It's a cinematic lens, so it makes everything prettier, but, uh, I wanted it a little bit tighter. So we brought it closer. <clears throat> so anyway, now you can, uh, Get a better look at what we're talking about here. Actually, here, I'll give you a better look. Uh, manual focus, so give me one second while I focus. Uh, uh, there they are. So you can see the um, the black is not as tight as I would like it to be. Uh, it's just roughed in. So we're going to go in with some white today. We're going to clean it up, make it look pretty, and then put our big completed stamp on it. Because like I said... This just needs to be done. I've uh, I've spent too much time on it all on it already. I would prefer to do one piece a day. This one's taken three days for whatever reason. All right, so now zooming or actually focusing back down at the desk level. There we go. And now we paint because that's what this channel's all about: painting. Uh, let me get my magnifier and light out because. My eyes aren't what they used to be. <sighs> and the Juggalo Dungeon is dark and mysterious. Ooh, let me see. Let me see if I can focus that in a little better for you. Whoop, that's the wrong way. There, that'll help you out. Now you can see what I see, and we can all participate together. And here we go, day three. Off to the races, ladies and gentlemen. Off to the races.
So, and then I smudge the paint with my fat finger. That's cool. That's cool. We'll fix that. No worries. Not my finger. I'm not going to fix my fingers and I'm not going to cut it off. Or put it on a diet. Rather, what I'm going to do is come back in a minute with black and reapply the appropriate paint in the appropriate spot. get hung up on any words today just understand that I uh, spent the entire day writing so uh, I've used quite the allotment of words already so uh, my word thinking ain't good right now I'm all used up on words Excuse me. Okay. I think I'm using the wrong brush for the situation. Yes, JR, I did start early. I was uh, sitting here at my desk thinking about things. And uh, I didn't like what I was thinking about, so I just went ahead and hit the go live button. So here we are. Welcome, JR. You haven't missed a, a ton. I've, it's only been going for like 10 minutes. Yeah, YouTube. YouTube's terrible, man. I think YouTube just doesn't like what I do, because uh, I think the algorithm hates me at this point. I'm not getting the views I used to. It's weird. I haven't changed. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess you kind of dipped out before I did uh, most of the black. Um, so yeah, it has gotten better, but um, it needs a lot of spit and polish today. It's almost done. Almost done. My brush feels real stiff. Real stiff. I also, before I went live, I adjusted the camera, so it's a little 
a little tighter on the table. Um, the focus is set right now for uh, here when it's in my hand, not so much when it's laying on the table. Yeah, it's all good. Also, hello, Maya. That is a better shot, though, set up like that. I do like that. You can, you guys can definitely see it a lot better. Oh, that's right. I forgot that's what you were doing. So then, uh, nice. Man, that Beetlejuice trailer looks pretty sick. Pretty excited. Um, so JR, when you're done training, you can do the thing where you just uh, type random letters on your keyboard and then suddenly you're, you know, in in government files. You're you've hacked the FBI. I always hated that in movies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it takes like fifteen seconds of just click 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 click. click. So dumb. Uh, Country Time Lemonade, by the way, is the flavor today. And it is hitting the spot. As it usually does. Pineapple V8 Energy Drink. That sounds intense. That makes my Country Time Lemonade sound very domestic. <laughs> Man, excuse me. <clears throat> Shake up my black a little bit here. That looks better already. Well, it sounds crazy. <laughs> Hmm. 
Oh, sorry, I'm off camera. My bad, my bad, my bad. Not gonna lie, it cracked me up a little bit when Wiggles said, uh, when I talked about how I was painting in a, uh, a corner of the two faces that was hard to reach. And he was like, uh, well, if nobody can see it, why are you, why do you have to paint it? Uh, because it exists. <laughs> I can't not. Exactly, because it's there. And if I don't do it, maybe people will never notice, but I'll know, and I'll never feel good about it. It'll always feel like an incomplete piece that I can't be proud of. In my mind. <laughs> that's the thing with uh, putting this media online like I can manipulate the angles and manipulate filters and I can make this look better than it is. Um, but the whole point is making it good in person. I don't want it to just look cool in a TikTok. Because if it looks good in person, then it will look good on TikTok. Like... The quality comes through. Yeah. Yeah. Nevermore. I painted it. Both the Raven. Nevermore. It would haunt me like that. Like the Telltale Heart. I mean, it's like the cherub that got crushed by uh, UPS. I think about that. It bothers me. I did, um... I did finally wash the piece that I'm hoping will replace it. Um... Which is another reason why I want to get this piece done. Because <clears throat> I want to start working on that one. ASAP. That's where. Was there a wrestler named The Raven? I don't remember that. Or just Raven?
no. They... <clears throat> we used to have a lot of wrestlers that would come to the convention that I work at. And, uh... Huh. I've probably seen them. Um... But yeah, we had ECW wrestlers that would come to the convention. Um... And, you know, it's a, they also get, like, the runoff of WWE anyway. Um, yeah, I've, I've probably seen them. Those contracts for, like, conventions. WWE is really their buttholes. Like, your convention can have one or the other, either WWE or anybody, any other wrestling association, but they can't exist at the same time together in one convention, which is obnoxious. Huh. Did he change his name in WWE? Because there was, there was a, a, like, grunge guy, um, but I, I don't think his name was Raven. <coughs> Johnny Polo. Okay, so it's older then. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna think of. I don't know. <laughs> I probably saw him. <clears throat> That's also just I don't. Outside of the the bigs, you know, I I don't remember too many wrestler names. Um, I have a lot more brain capacity dedicated to uh, Star Wars characters and uh, more useless trivia. Raven's Flock. Yeah, I don't remember that either. <laughs> I've always had a dream of... Uh, yeah, I've always had a dream of starting another um, music venue on my own and uh, calling it the Raven Room. And then uh, for the street team and, you know, basically just people that support the venue, um, I would print up shirts and anybody that's part of the street team or a heavy supporter of the venue would be part of the murder. Um I think that'd be cool. But probably never gonna happen. Yeah. It's a cool idea. Join the murder. <clears throat> yeah. 
They used to sell vinyl albums online, and it was Raven Room Record. I think I did, um, I think I did watch Get, Get Hard, um, like, shortly after it was released, um, but I don't remember it liking it much, so I think I kind of blocked it out. I mean, it, it had funny moments, but... On the whole, it, it was just, I don't know, but like both Will Ferrell and uh, Kevin Hart were just kind of doing, I don't know, low hanging fruit jokes. Strike one, uh oh, is that one of your favorites? Here we go. Buckle up. They are coming in hot. Well, <clears throat> I would say in terms of Will Ferrell movies, it's just he's done quite a few. And most of them are excellent. There's been a few that have been Mm. Uh, it's not as bad as the uh, um, Sherlock Holmes movie that he did so there's that <laughs> <clears throat> and in my defense I have not seen the unrated version so I'll try to I'll try to find it I'll watch it just because I like you guys. <clears throat> Goodness. First off, it's hilarious. <laughs> I would say my humor is fairly different from the norm as well. Uh, like, I, I really enjoy absurdist comedy. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, it's, it's just, it isn't for the masses. It makes most people uncomfortable, and th which is kind of the intent. Um, I 
but to me, there there's like a simple absurdist humor that's just like, eh, like, you know, fart jokes. Like in in terms of like the brain capacity required, and then there are complete masters of the form. Um, could be Tim Heidecker, Eric Wareheim, um, Will Ferrell is as well. Uh, Soza, um, can't think of his name right now. John C. Riley is clearly um, practiced or a practitioner of absurdist comedy. Which, and I always think it's funny because he's like, you know, an acclaimed actor. He's been in the Academy Awards. You know, he's kind of a big deal. Um, but then he's he's also doing some really off the wall comedy stuff that a lot of people aren't aware of, but they should be. Like, have you guys seen Dr. Stephen Brule? Check it out with Dr. Steve Brule. Check it out. It's a series that's on a... Or was on Adult Swim. Yeah. That... That show... <clears throat> that show rips, man. It's so good. And I love that early on, <clears throat> when people would, in interviews, would ask John C. Riley about how did he come up with the character of Steve Brule, he would insist, it's not me. I've never heard of that. Who are you talking about? And he would try to try to say that it was like a cousin or a brother or something that was doing it. Um... That cracked me up. And then, come to find out later that none of it was even scripted. That character literally came out of nowhere on an episode of Tim and Eric Awesome Show Great Job. And it just blew them away. As it should. It's, it's an amazing character. So, are you guys Tim and Eric fans as well, by chance? Oh, yes, I do. Yeah, actually... Uh, Zach Galifianakis is also an, an absurdist uh, comedian. I've actually been a fan of his stand-up since the late 90s. Um, back when he would just play a piano and riff uh, and just murder. He was so... I mean, he's still really, really good, but his, his stand-up was so different from anyone else. Um, yeah, I, I love Zach Galifianakis. He, so, dude, I, yeah, you're, you're walking into something I get really deep into. Um, so first off, ooh, sorry, fingers. Um, <laughs> mm, yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, what was I saying? Talking about, uh, Totally lost my train of thought. Now I'm on Zach Galifianakis. Um, anyway, uh, another thing you can... Oh, yeah, so Tim Heidecker, this is what it was. Uh, Tim Heidecker, he did a, uh, a stand-up set that is phenomenal. Uh, that's on... It's on YouTube. Um, 
and he does it all in character and it's it's so good because it's like he's basically playing the role of a ultra conservative um like like Andrew Dice Clay inspired mid 90s comedian um and he is fully committed to the character and it is so good <laughs> it's it's phenomenal as far as stand up goes in my opinion it's the greatest stand up routine i've seen in years like it is so solid and it's it's comedy for comedians ultimately but you know it he stuck the landing too the audience died um it was so good but then on top of that back to Zach Galifianakis uh <clears throat> they so Tim and Eric and Zach they signed a sponsorship deal with uh uh Stoli Nachka vodka or whatever Stoli and so they I think it was Stoli they uh they did this series of commercials <laughs> that are just just insane uh and they're on YouTube too you should look those up um for whatever reason they insist on wearing these women's wigs from like the 50s throughout the entire series and uh they they would in each commercial it would basically be they would be like playing like they were very very like old friends that were kind of ambiguously female vintagey weird um but then something would either happen like physically or something would be said that was kind of like negative and Zach will break character on a dime and uh and just like just kill the scene but it it's so funny cuz it's commercial for vodka <laughs> it is the most absurd vodka commercials i've ever seen I didn't buy vodka because of it, uh, but it made me laugh a lot. So yeah, look look that up too. I I am a definite lover of comedy. Yeah, I was watching uh, Zach Galifianakis back when, like, Comedy Central would, like, put his special on at, like, 11 p.m. or whatever when nobody was watching. That was also when I wanted to be a comedian, too, so I was, like, deep into studying the art of comedy, the mechanics of comedy. Yeah. They, you know, as, as much as cable networks can be absolute trash garbage just commercials for things we don't need and politics um comedy comedy central still to this day they they're not like mtv like they are still committed to comedy and uh there's still gold on there you just have to dig for it a little bit more than it used to be um but a lot of that, actually, the good stuff on Comedy Central now, a lot of it is actually Will Ferrell driven um, and his production company. Of 
Like, I'm pretty sure... Pretty sure Drunk History, I think, is produced by Will Ferrell's company. Not that it was his idea, it wasn't. But he ran across it, and I think he bankrolled it. Which is good, because, dude, Drunk History is also absolute comedy gold. Yeah, I didn't I didn't have cable growing up. My parents didn't believe in it. So uh <clears throat> I would go to my buddy's house and you know, he'd want to go out and party and do whatever and I would be like, "Ah, no, nah, I'm just going to stay in your basement." And I would just Comedy Central Food Network, those two things all night long. Favorite stand-up comedian of, of like all time? Uh Well, let's just, for for right now, favorite stand-up comedian right now is a guy named, uh, oh, William Osmond, I think is his name, from Kill Tony. Um, let me make sure I've got that right. Nope, that's not right. Kill Tony. William M Montgomery. That's what it was. My bad. Uh, William Montgomery right now uh, is doing remarkable things with uh, stand-up comedy. Um, to the point now where people are copying, copying his shtick. Um... So he's, and he's one that, um, I don't know, one of the success stories of Kill Tony, which is another reason why I love Kill Tony. He, uh, he really came out of nowhere. Um, he was doing stand up on his own, you know, small things where he was from open mics and stuff. And then he went on Kill Tony and just, just destroyed. And, uh, so they made him a regular and, Man, he's not, he's not letting up. He's just, he's really, really good. Really on top of his game when it comes to comedy. And it's not even just his written prepared comedy. It's his crowd work that's really, really good. Um, he, I don't, you know, you know how it is. Sometimes comedians they have personas on stage his persona on stage is uh insane completely insane um definitely worth looking up um but favorite stand up of all time it's a hard question um hmm Hard, like there's so many names running through my mind right now. Um, when it comes to absurd, absurdist comedy, um, obviously, um, oh god, now I just forgot his name. Um, <clears throat> uh, the guy that Jim Carrey played in Man on the Moon. Um, Andy Kaufman, stupid. Uh, George Carlin's good too, yeah. <clears throat> hey, Wiggles, yes, uh, I did see that. Um, yeah, that bridge collapse was terrible. And that's, I don't know, those steamships, that whole industry, I used to work in the trucking end of intermodal. Um, 
transit. And uh, I'm not saying it's a completely shady industry, but uh, it's it's definitely got some shade. And those steamship lines, they do whatever they want. So yeah, favorite stand-up of all time. George Carlin is a good one. Uh, Andy Kaufman's up there for me. Some of the things he did was phenomenal. Um, another one for me is Bob Newhart. Like, legitimate Bob Newhart. Um, say what you want. Uh, that, that dude had some chops. Um, also, Don Rickles. Like, for real. Um, what he did for comedy was pretty phenomenal. Um, there aren't too many dudes that could, uh, like, keep the Rat Pack in check. Don Rickles could. And anybody, for that matter. Don Rickles. People used to be afraid of Don Rickles. Not because he was going to beat you up, but, you know, he, he would kill you with his words. He, he was brutal <laughs> and I respect that oh they're 100% legendary Don Rickles dude yeah so when I say I, I was a student of comedy I really was I, I was digesting comedy not just as a uh, like participant like as the crowd but like for science <laughs> and there are some comedians that really understand the science of comedy because it is a thing um, and then there's others that just lob words out and hope for the best um so there are comedy masters, and then there are comedy people that got lucky. Or have somebody in the business. There's a lot of... Yes, that is a thing too. Or they are um, they are salesmen of certain uh, certain products that a lot of comedians tend to use to stay up. speak from experience that is very prevalent in comedy or not just stay up but get in character uh bob and tom yeah a little bit yeah um There's, I don't know, there, there's only so much time. <laughs> um, there's a local, oh good, good Wiggles. Are you, what are your symptoms at this point? Out of morbid curiosity. Oh, yeah. The good thing with that bridge is that it happened at 1.40 in the morning. 
So it wasn't as occupied as it could have been. I was hoping the nausea thing had passed. I'm oh, sorry, dude. It probably feels like it comes and goes because the contents of your stomach come and go. So you probably get more symptoms when there's stuff on your stomach than when it when your stomach's clear, then you feel fine. But obviously your body needs sustenance, so... <clears throat> but that's that's my unofficial opinion. Not a doctor. <laughs> yeah. As far as the uh, like bigotry in the in the family, honestly, I think it has to do with um, people that have served time. I think uh, I think a lot of that stuff stems from like doing hard prison time, um, because you know the. That stuff. You're presented with choices in there. And, um... You know, the... Without... I don't want to glorify anything either way. But, uh... But... In order to survive in there, some people think they have to be as... Tough and threatening as possible. Yeah, sorry, Maya. Uh... So I think guys with light skin tones do all the things that make everybody go, ugh. And one of them is tying themselves to the group that likes to wear swastikas. And then the other is, uh, you know, the scary clown stuff. Because that, that does make other people uncomfortable. So you kind of adopt that into your lifestyle. And I'm not saying that's everybody. Some people are fans, but I, I think other people do it because it's an outward appearance that is threatening and scary to some people. 
my opinion. Well, yeah. <laughs> You're not the target, though. <laughs> It's all posturing either way. Again, my opinion. Right. Yeah. And I, yeah. Um, like, I live in the state of Kansas, right? This is the state that the Civil War broke out after we had a, a vote and said we don't want slavery in this state when we became a state, right? That's American history. We all know that. So, and then the Civil War broke out. So when I see people in my state of Kansas that fly the Confederate flag, it boggles my mind. Like, that's, it, it doesn't have a place anywhere, everywhere it's inappropriate. But in the very state that all got together and said, no, nah, we're not, we're not part of that nonsense. We want to be part of the good side that doesn't want slavery. Why would you be flying that flag here? You can't say it's because of your tradition or whatever. No, that was that was never tradition here, ever. But people fly it. I think that's insanely stupid. Yeah, I, I hate the whole it's my heritage argument. I think that's the most dumb argument ever. Yeah, 100%, Maya. Yeah, 100%. And I would I would rather fight somebody over that out of my like I respect the state of Kansas for taking that stand they did then. And I I think it's worth defending that stand to this day. Right. Yeah. I don't know. It's there's idiots everywhere. Plain and simple. There's always going to be morons. There's always going to be racists. There's always going to be bigots. There's always going to be it's just going to be. Not that I'm saying we should give up on fighting them. Heck no, dude. <laughs> anyway, painting, yeah. <laughs> Okay, let me give you an update, actually. Uh, one sec. Let me do the thing where I bring it up here. Nice and tight. And then we focus it in manually. hey -oh. Remember how we started? This is where we are now. Clean lines. Pretty dang sick. It's such a pretty lens, too. Look at that. Uh... That lens is gorgeous. So yeah, as I get used to using this lens, using the manual focus and stuff, I think I think this is a good move. Because it just makes things look really pretty. It does does the work justice. So you can see there are there are a couple of little lumps and bumps. It's not exactly perfect. But it's real close. Real, real close. So let me do a couple more brush strokes and be done with it. Look at that. Manual focus. <laughs> yeah, Shaggy. Yeah, that, that little cherub. He's definitely, he's been into something. <laughs> I noticed that too. He's got the squints and then the whites of his eyes are definitely bloodshot. Okay. Anyway. 
Maya said shut up and paint. Uh-oh. My brush got dry. Yeah, apologies to any creeps and listeners that came in during all that. So anyway, comedians. <laughs> Honestly, I don't even know what people want me to talk about on here. Like, what... What is the thing that people could potentially hear me talking about that would make me go, Oh, I should stay here and stick and listen and hang out. I haven't cracked that code yet. God knows we've talked about a lot of different things in here. Over all the different streams. Okay, where was the other part that was just not? It's over on Shaggy here. Get this lined out a little cleaner. Yeah. And then a little touch over here. And then a little touch on his nose. So I finished watching that show, The Gentleman, last night. The Guy Ritchie thing on Netflix. The series, not, not the movie. The movie's good too, though. I like the series. The ending was, felt like rushed, though. It also felt kind of stupid. Like in the writer's room, they were like, Oh, just put uh, ending number 12 on that one. Standard ending number 12. Okay, I think we are at a point where we need, we need a couple little touches of white, and then we are done. For realsies. For realsies. So, where, where was I looking? I was looking right here. There's a little bit, and then that is still showing through a little. And that is not a straight line. Okay. Then... That transition wasn't so clean. Right there is not either. Oh yeah, and then on Shaggy's nose, right here. There, that's better. Let's see here. Right there. Oh, right there, too. Okay. 
Some tick down that goldfish. Wiggles just dropped a link in the chat if you are, like he said, Juggalo, Juggalo Curious, Juggalo Adjacent, whatever. Just looking for a place to hang out and chat with folks. You can click on that link, it'll take you to a Discord server. That is Juggalo centric, but open. Um can hang out with people like us, chat, post pictures, brag about cool stuff that you're doing, whatever. Meet good people. Okay. Let's go naked eye here, see what this looks like. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we're done. What do you think? Does that get the stamp of approval? Boom. Little Juggalo Cherubs. Complete. What do you think? Bada bing. Do the, the focus again. Look at them up close. Yeah, see, just those little, little bitty touches really tidied that thing up at the very end. Give it a little more light. There you go. I think that's a pretty good looking dang piece right there. Boom! Done! Feel good about that. And that's right on time, too. Look at the time. 529. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Let me get the focus back on the desk, and then we'll come over here and look at me. We'll say our goodbyes, and we'll sign off, and we'll pretend like we had the best show ever. Because it was pretty good. I am glad that we finished uh, the little Juggalo Cherubs. Uh, JR just posted a link in the chat. If you like what you see here, I sell these, and you are welcome to buy them. Uh, in fact, I encourage you to buy them, because that helps support me. Uh, yeah, um, but also, it makes your stuff on your shelf look cool, because you're not going to find this anywhere else. Look at this guy. Daggum. Uh, so yeah, click on that link. It's not all this. There's a lot, I mean, it's all Juggalo stuff, um, but there's a lot of different ones, a lot of different things that could fit your needs. Uh, I guess it's not all Juggalo stuff. Garbage Pail Kids now, too. Daggum, my shop is getting cool and cooler every day. Actually, the Garbage Pail Kid isn't in the store yet, because it's probably going to get sold this weekend at the uh, event that I'm going to, so... That's coming up. This is going to go on the table with it. Not going to put it on the shop or in the shop yet. I'm going to take it to that event. And if it sells there, then I don't have to worry about UPS crushing it. Uh, your shelves absolutely suck without things like this on them. I mean, come on. Actually, Wiggles, JR, Maya, they all have them. You want to be like the cool kids. You got to get one too. In fact, they've got some really really sick ones that uh probably my crowning moments of uh juggalo face painting okay anyway uh it is time to go so thank you to jr uh maya wiggles uh for hanging out for chatting for keeping me entertained while i entertain you thank you to all the creeps and listeners that that uh clicked through uh y'all are y'all are Good too. You're good people. Just uh, hang out longer next time. Watch the entire thing. Because then you can see it really come into fruition. You know? Because just watching for two minutes, there's no way you can really take in all the majesty of this guy. 
Um, anyway, it's almost dinner time. I'm hungry. Thank you again for joining me. I'm here every Monday through Friday, 4.30 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, uh, or 10.30 p.m. to 11.30 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, if you happen to be in the UK. Um, I am on, uh, obviously, YouTube. I'm also on Facebook and Instagram and Reddit and other places wherever, uh, everywhere as Precious Juggalos. This cool little logo right here. That's the name of my business. You can look that up. You'll find me and you'll find the things that I create. And um, you can react to them. You can react to this video. Give it a thumbs up and a subscribe. Uh, that would help me out. Um, and that's free. You don't have to buy anything from me. You can just do that. And uh, that would support me. Um, so anyway, thanks again, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow. Whoop, whoop, y'all. Have a great day. And uh, wisdom of the day. Hmm. Country time lemonade. There's never a wrong time for country time. See you guys. <laughs>